Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here coming at you with another video. Okay, so tonight we're um we're working on the KE-102 build. And um, I have some carburetor information. This carburetor information keeps coming up. I, I get a lot of requests and a lot of um, conversations with people about carburetors. And um, it just seems to be the biggest talk of, of the, um, the KEs. And many, many people have these bikes sitting. So there's a, there's a whole bunch to go over tonight. Um, so you, once again, you're going to have to use this as a reference, um, these videos. So um, on the KE-102 uh, 102 build, I did the air filter modification. I, um, what do you call it there? I, I mounted on a few things since the last time we've all chatted. Like I put the, um, what do you call it there, the oiler on. And ran the cables, got the new line through the, fed through the grommet. You know, little things, you know, nothing major. So I, I didn't forget about you guys with anything major. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about, a little bit more about carburetors. I modified this car. This carburetor was heavy, heavily modified. And what I mean by that is, well, I'm going to show you guys the difference between the newer carburetor and the older carburetors. There's a few generations of carburetors. We have a lot to go over, guys. A lot. All right, so some people um, call, there's a square bore carburetor, and I'll show you what that one looks like. This is the square carb. It's not a square bore, it's a square bowl. So, just so we know, you know, we know what we're talking about here. It's a square bowl, bowl carburetor. Um, it is not compatible with our regular rounded ones that you, you commonly see. Okay, so there you go. This is the early one um, from like the 70s, early 70s, and I think like to 82 or something like that. And then you have the, the newer style carburetor, which is right here, the McCoonies. Okay, in fact, I don't even know if this is a McCoonies, this one here. Yeah, it doesn't have a um, name stamped into it, so it's kind of like a generic carburetor, if you will. The numbers are still stamped on the back, though, to identify it. But you can see how the screws get all stripped out, and but basically it's the same carburetor, just that the bowl is squared, and it has a little different feature on the gasket, but the jet... The main jet and the um, idle mixture screw are in the exact same. I mean, the uh, pilot jet, which is right here, right here on this one, and the, the main jets right there. And then you get your needles and then the floats. So basically, it's the same carburetor, just a little different configuration. A um, little smaller of a bore. The front's basically the same. You see how you take pop this cover off right here, and then you can get to your idle mixture screw. Um, this carburetor here came to me, it was missing the bowl, but other than that, it's in excellent condition, so I'm going to keep that for a spare for another one I have. It's a replacement for my KM, uh, which I'm converting over to a new style. And then you have, um, I want to show you guys the difference between the early 90s and then the late 90s carbs. Okay, so the early 90 carb, the early 1990s carburetor on the KE uh, 100s, the McCoonies. Had the idle mixture screw here. Okay. Basically it's the same carburetor. But they just. See how this right here is blocked off. Well that's where they, they move the idle air screw. To right there. And you can see it in there. So I opened up the bore. The hole. Where the uh, air goes through. So I can get more airflow going through the motor. Um, more airflow. And get a little bit more performance out of this carburetor. So. Um. I also rejetted this carburetor with bigger jets in it. Um, I opened it up. I mean, this thing is is crazy. This carburetor, what I've done to this carburetor. And we're gonna do some more modifications tonight, and I'm gonna show you guys some alternatives and some tips and tricks. So, um, as the videos go on, you might notice that I use only professional tools, and I use professional tools. And some of the tools you guys are probably like, I, I'm not gonna buy that tool. To do that, I'll find another way to get that out, like the uh, the plug. So I'm gonna grab that plug. This is the Welch plug right here. Okay, and this Welch plug is an expansion plug. It looks kind of like a freeze plug, if you will, but much 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 smaller. And this plug covers the idle mixture screw because it's preset in the factory, and then they put this plug on there. And then the tool, which I showed you in one of my other carburetor videos. Is this tool right here to remove it and then I got a lot of questions of well how is there another way I can remove it without buying that tool I mean I really just need it that one time well there is 
Let me show you another way you can do it. Okay. The other way you can do it is take a drill bit, put some electrical tape around it, and leave it with about an eighth of an inch. Okay, you get an eighth of an inch on there. You can drill through, all the way through, and then use a self-tapping screw in the center of it, and then use a pair of pliers and pop it out. So you can drill into it, just leave an eighth of an inch, use electrical tape as a guide, and don't go past your electrical tape because you might go into the idle mixture screw and mess up the threads. That's pretty much it. So the alternative to this tool right here that I used to remove the welt plug is a one eighth inch bit and mark it at one eighth. That's simple. And then you can take that out. Okay, so um, I showed you guys what the most common leaks are. When I, when I went over some of my videos with you, one of my carburetor videos, I told you that it's either your needle and seat. I told you that it's either an incorrect float, uh, float bowl adjustment and um, or a broken, um, a crack in the fuel line, okay? Um, that would cause our hole in the, you know, the float, holding it open and then it over, overflows. Um, showed you the different ways that the fuel could leak. Now, I also want to talk to you guys about bikes that have been sitting in fields and just been sitting outside for a very, very long time. These tubes right here that come up through can develop cracks in them um, if there was water in the carburetor. So, the, the cures that I told you about on the carburetors originally, that's for a, a bike that has not been sitting with water in it. For a bike that's been sitting with water in it, what happens is is your float collapses. It squishes. It, it, I mean, it, it, it collapses. It's crushed. Okay? Because what happens is water builds up in there and it freezes. And then it cracks these two tubes right here. And you'll be able to... These, this doesn't have it. I don't have one that has it. But you can use a magnifying glass and look inside there and see if there's any cracks. This bowl is perfect condition. But I just wanted to tell you about that because I have found that once or twice. So, all right, now I want to um, I show you guys the differences on the carburetors, which is, I already showed you in another video, but I wanted to re re um, reiterate that. Having a messed up night with my words, I apologize. Very tired, been a very long day. All right, next thing I'm going to talk to you guys about modifications, which, as, I, as you know, I do a lot of modifications. And everything I do is... Pretty much dead on. I haven't had an issue with anything yet, so knock on wood. All right, so we have the problem with the screw that goes through the the, um, the clamp screw, okay? That goes through and there's a nut on the other end of it. And what happens is they, they get boogered up. They come with the older ones, had the flathead style, and you can see how it's the screw, you know, it's just a hair below the, the hole opening. Or it's got a Phillips screw, and the Phillips just strips out. Okay, and then you're like, ah, oh, why? I, I can't keep taking my carburetor on and off because these things are just stripping out. No matter what I use for a screwdriver, even one that fits absolutely perfectly in there, it still seems to strip it out. Okay, let me show you my alternative. Here's what I use. An Allen head. And I use the factory screw. This way, I can stick my Allen head through the hole, and uh, it's a 5 millimeter. Right there, five millimeter. I can't really see it because of the light. But it's a five millimeter head. And then you can pop that through and loosen up your carburetor. Of course, you need a longer one than this. I use the ones that have the ball tip because you can get that slight angle on them and really get them nice and snug. So that's what I use to clamp my carburetors down is I use the Allen head screw, which is basically just a... Uh, just take yours down to the, the hardware store and get that one with the um, the Allen head. And it fits right in there and you don't have to worry about the shank. See the shank part of this right here? It's built into it. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. This one this one's just flat and ugly, but it works. Alright, so now we got that part done. Alright, so a friend of mine, Tom, had sent me some parts today. Uh, he sent me a carburetor kit for the KE100 and a drain plug, which I already put the drain plug in. But this is the carburetor kit right here he sent me. He bought for his, so I'm going to leave that up there. You can just 
you go on Google and you type that in, it'll all come up. So this right here is for the K, Kawasaki KE100, and it works throughout all the 90s and early, you know, in the 80s. Comes with a gasket. Comes with a lot of stuff. Comes with a new needle. Um, it, come, it came with the needle and seat. He sent me a set of floats too. It came with a new float pin. The idle air mixture screw. The spring that goes for the um, the needle. It came with a new needle and clip, C clip. And it came with a new needle seat and gasket right here, which is what I really need for this cover. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is button up this carburetor. We're going to get this thing set up and um, get this thing crack a so we can start using this carburetor for this motor and get this thing squared away. All right, so we're going to move this back here a little bit here. Like this, expand you up a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take my, uh, I already cracked it loose. Right here, the old needle and seat. And this is where it's leaking from. Right here, it leaks past the needle and seat. And if you get a chance to freshen up your carburetor, you know what, a carburetor tune-up kit wouldn't hurt. Inspect inside it, make sure there's no crap crud or anything like that. Blows through nicely. Nice and clean in there. No, you can't really see the needle and seat, but it's really, it's really porked in there. And I tried cleaning it. It's not going to come clean. So we're going to, we're just going to simply replace it. And put the new one in. Get that in and bolt it down. Yeah, let me move you so you can see what I'm doing. Always stop these in by hand a few turns. So if you don't, you could uh, strip your threads. I turn them in by hand. Okay, these don't have to be super tight. Okay? Basically, you just need to get them in and snug them. Give them a little bit and they'll be good to go. Nice and nice and snug. <laughs> if you over tighten them, you can ruin the threads. It can damage the seat. It can twist, and it can it can just be destroyed. Okay, so now we got the new needle in there. We got the jet that I'm keeping, which is an 85.7. We got the pilot screw. Now, these pilot jets are what clogs up if the bike's been sitting. You can see how, you can see the light through it. Look at that. You can see that on the camera. That's how clean these jets are. Okay, typically. You can't see through them, and you can't see through them with the uh, with the slide installed. So the slide has to be off in order to see through the jets. But look at that; you can see right clear through my jets. Um, you want to make sure you get those nice and clean so you can see through them. Um, the pilot jet, which is in the small one right here, this clean, this right here is the first one to plug up, even though it's not into the fuel as much. It for some reason because the office is so small, it clogs up first. So you're going to want to, if you have a bike that's been sitting, you're going to want to clean both of these really, really good. Make sure you do both of them. And a little tip for you on that, use a small screwdriver because if you use too big of a screwdriver, you can ruin the threads. So you always make sure they're nice and tight when you when you put them in there, just until it fits in. Give it a little, make sure it's tight because you don't want any of these things backing out on you. You know what I mean? You don't You don't want that type of heat. So, all right, now, the next step, I actually, I'm going to change out the um, idle air screw, because I, I took the, pl the plug off for that purpose, and I wanted to change it out. Not that it needs it, but since it came in the kit, I would like to switch it out. And you can see how it's got some crud on it. It's been cleaned, but it, it's got some crud on it. So you want to definitely do that. And the nice new shiny one, which is going to make a big difference in that. Blow it through. Looks nice in there. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. And you just put it until it just until it just snugs. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to my books. Here's what I wanted to show you guys. Here's the difference between books. Okay, I opened up both manuals to the page. Alright. Now, watch this. This book is the uh, climber manual. And I put it right on the page. See if I can get this up here for you guys. And it says right here, KE100. I highlight it. One and a half turns open from seat. That's the um, that screw I just put in. Idle speed screw right there. Idle speed. This non doesn't have one. And the float is at float level 24 millimeters. Fuel level 4 millimeters. Okay. That's that one. The Haynes manual. Okay, I'll show you this right here. So we're working on the KE100 um, USB and on. Okay, right here. And it shows you. Um, I don't have much information. Here we go. Main jet needles, um, blah, 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 valve hot, right here. Fuel, um, float valve seat, 15, 17.5, which, okay, that doesn't, you know, whatever. What I'm looking for is, um, float level, fuel level, float valve seat, Doesn't you know? It doesn't give you 2.0. What what is that? And then it gives you um, fuel level, and it, do, it doesn't make any sense. Where are you going to adjust it from that? You know what I mean? I want to know what my float setting is supposed to be, and it doesn't show you. It does show you the idle the um, idle mixture screw. See right here. Um, Throttle valve cutaway pilot air screw turns from turns out from close. It gives you that, but on the float, float valve seat 2.0. Oh, sure, absolutely. That doesn't make any sense. 2.0 inches from, from what? It doesn't give you. A setting. You know what I mean? It has nothing. So that's why sometimes the Haynes manual is not as accurate as the climber manual. Because if you're like me, you can't understand that. That doesn't make any sense. 24 millimeters on a float? Now that makes sense. 4 millimeters of fuel level? Okay, we can't check that on this carburetor. And I'm going to explain to you why that is and how you can check it on other carburetors. Okay, so we're going to talk about the fuel level. All right, so let me grab a donor. <coughs> we're going to use this carburetor to show you. This is the clear vent tube that drains out, like when you open up your um, valve here, your um, screw, to drain out the carburetor bowl. The fuel will run out this tube and onto the ground or into a bucket, preferably. But it's also a tool. If you take this this hose that's clear and go straight up with it like this, okay, and then you open up this valve, this screw, okay, not so it drips out here, but with the fuel on in the bike and drips down, it's going to come on and it's going to flow up this tube, okay. You're going to hold it as straight as you can. The fuel level will go up to about here. You're going to measure from where it is to the edge of this of this, um, what do you call it, the carburetor. And that should be four millimeters on the on the carburetor. However, this particular carburetor doesn't have that screw. So, there is no way possible for us to check that fuel level in the carburetor. It's impossible, there's no way. There's no access point to it, there is nothing. So, keep that in mind. Okay, so glad I got that part taken care of. Um, I also want to talk to you guys about the choke. 
I'm installing a remote choke. The choke is going to be up on the handlebars, and I'm going to show you how that that's going to work. But the um, the parts needed for that are from an earlier um, Trail Boss, okay, or an earlier KE175 has all the parts we need for that, and those parts are on order and they will be in. Um, so as soon as those come in, I'm going to be show, doing a video on that. I do have to order a cable too, which I haven't done yet. Okay, so here's the carburetor right here that we're working on. It's bored out and opened up. Got the new needle in there. And we have to adjust the pilot screw. So the pilot screw is going to be one and a half turns open. So to do this, okay, you turn it all the way in until it just seats. Don't force it just till it seats so it doesn't stop, until it stops, okay? Then we go half one and a half that's it it's all adjusted okay now when you get the bike running you're gonna have to fine-tune it it's gonna be a little bit off so you have to fine-tune it okay so we got that part done we got the jets are all in and tight okay jets are in and tight and then what we're gonna do we're going to install our needle this is the needle and this is the little tip on the end oh, there you go the tip on the end and the pointy part not the rod part but the pointy part goes down so that the little spring loaded part faces upward okay then you're gonna check your float now how do you check a float there's several ways that you need to check your float first is the visual inspection we're gonna look at the float we're going to see if there's any cracks or holes or if the solder is in any uh, danger. Now, sometimes you might see a flat spot on it from people squish them in, okay? But this doesn't have that. These, these are good, okay? We're going to check them and make sure that the, I call these pontoons, but the, um, the, the floats themselves are in good physical condition. There's no cracks. There's no holes. There's no deterioration or corrosion or any of that sort of thing. Then... I'm going to take it and put it on the counter with that part facing, you know, with, with it down. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you off here for a minute. And we're going to look. What I am looking for is to make sure that the carburetor is sitting flat. That both both floats are evenly placed on the, on the counter. And that there is no gaps at the bottom so the float's not twisted or anything like that. If it was in that case, then I would adjust it to um, sit flat, okay? If your float is not sitting flat, what can happen is it will um, it will not float correctly. And if you turn the bike one direction, it'll, it'll let more fuel in than it needs to, okay? So keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is see how the... The piece bubbles down, that's the bottom part. So that's going to go down first. Okay, it's going to sit just like that. It sits inside there. It came with a new pin. Well, let's get you over here so you can see what I'm doing here. See, here we go. It came with a new pin. So we're going to use the new pin that came in the kit. Because it's nice and shiny and new. Okay, and then we're going to tap it in. Now, you got to be careful. You don't want to tap it too hard and break these ears off. And you don't want to tap into the float. So, I'm just going to tap into the... Tap into the pin so it comes through and is nice and squared off. Okay, hold on one second. Let me... Do that a little differently here. I'm doing this off the camera here because I can't do it in the way of the camera. I'm just using a screwdriver on here like this, and I'm just tapping it. Being careful not to go too hard or too uh, far in. Because you don't want to bang on these ears too hard. You can break them, fracture them, and crack them. And you don't want to do that. Okay. 
so you want to see you want to see it be pretty much flat with the other side and that is flush and you have a little bit of a margin on that side see how that is I think I can go one more little tap with that put that in there just a little bit more you don't want to be bottomed out in case you have to take it apart again okay yep yeah, I got it show you how it's supposed to look Okay, you can see right there how it's got a little margin. I can stick my fingernail under it, and then it's it's flush with the side right here. I can I catch it with my fingernail. Okay, so that's how that's gonna go. And then make sure you don't you don't hit the floats at all when you're doing this. Okay. And now we're gonna measure it. So um, once again, I use a caliper vernier. There is different ways you can use them. Different things you can use. Um, they actually have a ruler with a little uh, tab on it. Um, I have one of those. Well, I have. I don't know where I put it. But you can use a ruler. You can use whatever you want that you can measure with. Okay, you can set it um, however you want to do it. Some people like using little rulers. Some people like using a, a caliper vernier. There is so many different ways of doing it. Some people actually just make a gauge and do it that way. I mean, you can use a little six inch ruler, you know, the little rulers there if you want. But I like to use the caliper vernier. This is, uh, I showed you guys this before. This is, this is made by General Tools. It is a high quality. I love this. I use this thing for everything. It's got the fraction display. Let me see if I can close you guys down over here. Okay, here we go. It's got the fraction display. It's got the millimeters and inches. And it's really cool. And it's, it's got a nice look to it. It comes with an extra battery and the tool to change the battery. That is a big plus for me. Okay, so you got on this caliper vernier. Let me show you this, this tool, guys. This right here loosens it and locks it. So if you have a measurement like that and you want to lock it in so you don't miss it, you can. This thing does inner diameters outer diameters and depth okay and that is pretty darn cool all right so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this thing on oh there we go i'm on fractions right now so i'm going to hit mode where's mode mode millimeters okay look at this it goes inches fractions millimeters okay and then you have a zero out button so see it's down here like this and um you know you go up too far you know, it starts off, you just hit zero and it'll zero it out. Okay, so we're going to 24. Make sure it's zero yeah, right here. See that? I did it. So now we're going to zero it out. Hit the zero button. Okay, like that. And then we're going to bring it down to 24 millimeters. Okay, 2439. You always have that plus or minus. And this, this is a very sensitive tool. So you're going to take you a couple minutes to get to, get to it. It's got a thumb dial right here. You can make it go even slower. You can see how sensitive this thing is. This tool is extremely sensitive. Alright, give me a second here. Well, this thing is sensitive. Uh, well, the closest I could get is 2401. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. This tool is sensitive. You get a good, accurate. Okay, 2402 is what it's going to be. All right, so for right now anyway, I'm going to put this right on the edge, and the float should be at the top of that at rest. 
Hit it, see where it's at. Right where it should be, guys. Right where it should be. This float is accurately measured. Right to the top of it. See that? And that's how you do it. So, for those of you who didn't quite understand what I was doing, I'm adjusting the float, which was actually already adjusted before. So I'm really kind of just checking it. But I got my open part right here, open to 24 millimeters. I rested on the bowl, the base of the carburetor, and I'm basically drawing a line from the top of this to the top of the bowl, and it should be at 24 inches, uh, 24 millimeters. Okay, and then that right there. Be careful; these edges can be tight and sharp, and you don't want to puncture a float with them, because that can easily happen. And that right there, my friends, is how you adjust a float. This float is perfect. Why? Well, I didn't show you how to adjust it. Because I didn't need to adjust it. But I'm going to show you how to adjust one right now. Okay. What you got to do. If your float is off. You got to take your little screwdriver. When you get your float in there. And see this little tab right here. You got to bend that tab down or up depending. So like say. Your float is down too low. And you need the float to go up. Then you would push down on the tab. If you need the, the if you're up too high, if you're up here like this, then you need to put it on the back side here and pull it up and bend it up. Now, with that said, you don't want to put pressure on your pontoons, on your float themselves. You want to, or on your needle and seat. You want to pick the float up off of it and adjust it that way. Um, so you're not putting pressure on the floats because you could easily warp the floats. And then you got one float down and up like this. And then you're not going to get an accurate measurement. You're going to be chasing that thing all night. Alright. So as a rule of thumb. Double check your float. Check your tension. When you flip it back up this way. You, your needle should drop. And I don't know if you can see the needle or not. Let's see who. The needle right in the middle there. Right up in there. And then of course the, um, the spring tension will hold it even tighter closed. So that's how that is. And now we're going to slap a new gasket. These gaskets are reusable. Make sure you put it on in the right direction. They can go on. You can't put them on backwards because you got this little, this little uh, Venturi pipe here. Which I'm going to talk to you guys about in a second. Make sure you fit it in there all the way first. Before you put your bowl on. New gaskets have a tendency to try to overhang. And um, they'll get caught up and then rip themselves out. Alright, now for my next tip for you guys. This is a pretty cool one. Uh, a lot of you guys don't even know this. And um, it's a it's probably one of the most overlooked parts of the carburetor. Let me go get my WD-40. For this part right here, I like to use WD-40. And WD-40, it says it's a lubricant, but it really never is a lubricant. It's more of a cleaner. You can clean anything with WD-40. Everything from stains on a carpet to anything with this thing. This stuff is good cleaner. However, it also has one other um, thing that you can use on it. Now, a lot of people don't realize that there is a jet in here. And it's picked up from right there. Now, this sits... In all the fuel so when your carburetor is sitting with bad nasty fuel in it it typically clogs that jet up and a lot of people spray some carburetor cleaner in there and they think it's all good and all good to go and nothing comes out of it so what I like to do is I like to take my my needle right here and I put it up to it give it a blast and see if I see how it came out the top Like that, that's a good. That means it sh that means it's clear. The pathway is clear. With that said, this thing is all ready to go back together. If it was not clear, then I would throw it in my ultrasonic cleaner, 
If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, then you could use carburetor cleaner and try to get it out. Um, different techniques you can use. You could use a um, a pin that you would use for sewing, a sewing needle, a, uh, a uh, paper clip, a torch cleaning kit. It's not a main jet. It's just a Venturi jet for that little air pocket there. And it just, it doesn't suck fuel in. I forgot, it's more of a, like a return type thing. It's not even that, it, it's, how would I put that? Fuel goes into it, it's, it's kind of like a, um, like a bypass, if you will, more of a vapor thing. Um, doesn't really suck it in. You get the Venturi pipe right here, it's got a couple little holes in it, and the gasket seats around, around of it. So make sure it's nice and clean when you put that on. So this bowl is nice and clean. That's what the inside of the carburetor right there is going to look like on the KE-102 build. That's it complete. So it's got the, uh, you can still see the idle, the idle jets, the idle screws. I mean, man, I can't talk tonight. The pilot jet and the main jet. Okay. Set that on like, like so. It's going to fit right in there. Nice and good, nice and snug, like a snug, like a bug in a rug. And then I'm going to go grab some screws, slap that together, and then we'll continue. Okay. Alright, so, put the screws in. I'm not tightening these all up, I'm just putting them in, starting them, and then giving them a, a good uh, screw. I always start my screws in before I tighten them all up. Because you never know. One, you might have to loosen it back up. Because if not, one could go in tight. Garbage, crisscrossy, crisscross applesauce. Make sure they're nice and good. Don't over tighten. But you don't want them to leak either. Okay. Once you take these welch plugs off, you can throw them away. They're not needed. You don't need to put them back. And then this is the drain right here that goes um, if you your pipes overflow and allows it to drain. So I'm going to put that on. Okay. That's on nice like that. Loosen up my bolt so I can go through. Okay, then the next step would be, um, I'm going to show you the components that I'm going to be using for the remote oil uh, choke. Here's the choke right here that you would normally have with your cable and then it's got a little hole. The little button goes on top here with a cotter pin. We're taking that out and leaving it out. And then you have this plunger right here. This is the plunger. The cable goes through the middle of it. That's going to go in first. We don't have the cable right now so we're just setting them in there. Okay, you can see how it blocks off the hole. That's your air hole right there. That hole is for your choke. Okay, that's where your air comes in from your choke. This is more of an air bypass valve. So you're going to put that in there and you can see it drop in just like that. It should go down nice and smooth. You have your spring. And then you have your the rest of the mechanism, all brass for your cable. Then you're going to screw that in. I'm not screwing this in tight because I have to take it apart again. When I go to put the, um, what do you call it there? The choke in. So, the cable. And that's how it's going to look right there. The cable go down through the amp, pull up on the choke, and then they'll have remote choke. So, I'm going to go over the modifications I've done to this. Okay. I bored it out. I made the hole bigger. I matched it. I matched it to the intake port on the motor. And to do that, as I showed you in my last video there, I used my um, pneumatic, uh, Astro Pneumatics. I used the flat one, which is still on my drill, so it's, it's in the shed right now, but that's the one I used right there. Okay, with that said, 
I grinded out both here and I matched it to that size. You can see how nice and wide open that is right there. And I don't know if you can see really the comparison, but you can see the barrier on that one. So it sticks up like an eighth inch all the way around. This one's just nice and wide open. There's no margin. I don't know if you can see that. Right so this one's opened up significantly. I opened up the front. You can see how I open it? it's all opened up in the front. I did that. That's the air horn. And you want to make sure that's smooth. So after I grinded it, I used 320 grid sandpaper. That stuff right there. And I sanded the ever-living hell out of it. And made sure that it was nice and smooth and that there was no burrs and that my slide would slide up and down the uh, bore. You can see how it looks inside. Oh, maybe you can't. Let me see if I got my light here. Okay. If you can see that or not. Nice and clean inside there. So we got that all nice and done. And then this here will slide right in here. I already changed the um, the jets as I showed you in my last video. This is kind of an update on that that video. Make sure it seats in properly. Okay, just like that. And then what I always do is I take a pair of pliers and give it a little snug. Um, don't gorilla tighten it. You don't need to. It just needs to be snug. Snug like a bug. Okay. I've seen these things on there so tight that I, I didn't think it was ever going to come off. I just grab it. A couple spots. Give it a little bit of... Uh, you know what I mean? Alright. So... You're going to notice that I did not change the spring or the needle in this case because the needle I have in there is the one I'm going to use because it's a more powerful needle. Um, I have a performance needle in there, performance jets, and it's a matched kit, so I'm not going to change it. However, that can easily be changed. Now, with that said, for those of you who need to know how to change a needle, I'm going to grab one right now. Let me show you guys how to change a needle. Okay, so you have, this is the slide set up right here. This is from another carburetor. Here's how I do it. I take my spring, and I, oh, let me see if I can get you guys up here a little bit better. Yeah, just want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so here's the, the slide mechanism. Your, key, your throttle cable comes through here, goes down through, through the slide, and hooks up into there. Now, there's different types. There's this, the type with the regular pull uh, pull slide. Let's see if I can find one if I have one of those handy. No. No, I don't have any handy with me. I got a ton of carburetors, but not with that on. Okay, so anyway. Um, what if this style has it? Hold on one second. I'd like to, sh I'd like to show it to you. Yeah, there we go. I got one. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So there's two different types of slides. This slide right here has the, the uh, groove right down it. And then basically you would pull your cable down through. Hold this out like this. Grab your cable. Slide it on the outside down, look it in, release the spring, and then you're hooked up. And that's all there is to it. The second style, which is that style right there, commonly used on the 90s. The 90s ones I was just showing you, this type of slide. Right here doesn't have that, it has a retainer in there. So let me show you how to get that out. Okay, so same thing, you pull up your spring. So you get to the bottom. Rotate it halfway around. Let go of your spring. Now it's all nice and wide open. Okay. So then you push up on your spring. On your clip. And it releases. The retainer ring. This retainer ring also holds in your. Um, your cable. And then you slot your uh, needle just slides out. Now. 
for those of you who don't know how to tell what needle you have in your in your machine, I like to use my uh, handy dandy little uh, we call it. I had them earlier. My slide um, magnifying glass, which is around here someplace. I just had it not that long ago. A lot of stuff going on at the same time. All right. Well, anyway, I'll show you without it. Just thought I had it handy earlier. Well, the numbers for your needle are written right on the stem. They're right up in here. So you have to use a magnifying glass to find them. Um, this is going to sound awful, but if you have a little bit of dirt on your finger, like like grease, oil. You can just wipe it, spin your uh, needle as you have it on your finger, and then you'll be able to see the numbers a little bit more clearly. Um, and then you'll have to clean it off, of course, with carburetor cleaner. That's how that would go. Yeah, I don't know where I put it. I put it down and then I lost it. I got too much stuff out here at the moment. Okay, well, anyway. And now what you would do is all these KE 100s the needle is set in the middle okay you're gonna want to start in the middle someone move this one up but it's supposed to be in the middle and then it's oh where's it right here then you take it you slide it back in some of these have a spring in there so some of these will have like a plastic um it'd be a big plastic at the bottom and a small plastic on top and then underneath the big plastic is where that little spring would go so on that side, it would go spring, the fat plastic. So spring, uh, the fat plastic, then the spring. The spring would be at the bottom. And then a little white plastic one at the top. It would slide in. And then the retainer would go on top. Okay. So now, now what you're going to do is you're going to slide the cable down through. Rotate it, get it, into the, get it locked into your, your key. And then use this right here. This little tab right here. Is what holds your throttle cable in place. That would go in the groove. I don't know if you can see how I got that. Let me see if I can expand this a little bit for you guys. All right, yep. So you got the retainer clip right here. That little flap, that little groove piece, right here, the tab fits in and that locks your cable in when the spring is on it. So when you put that in, okay, you're just going to manipulate it with your screwdriver until it keys in like that. Then you pick up your spring, rotate it halfway around, lock it in place, and then push up, give the needle a little shove up, it won't go up. Okay? That's how that whole system, that's how those, those two go. All right, so we covered how to change the needle, the the, uh, the location of it is halfway point, and um, so on. Back on my modifications, okay. I'll go over this one more time with you. I bored it out here and on the back side. I upgrade to an Allen head because it's a lot easier to work with, okay. I changed over to a remote choke, which is going to be up on the handlebars. That's going to be another video. I showed you guys how to remove your um, idle your idle cap screw. Um, you can do it two ways. You can do it one with the specialty uh, tool, or two with a one eighth drill bit taped off to one eighth, so you don't go in too far because you don't want to mess up the threads. Remember, you still have to take it out, and you might need it again. So that's how you how you do that. Went over how to um, adjust the float, um, how to install a needle and seat, and that's pretty much it. This is a pretty heavily uh, modified carburetor, that's for sure. And then we got the rubber on the bottom there, the drain. So this is all going to fit onto here. Want to make sure that the you want to make sure that the black rubber is in there first, and then the insulator is on the outside. 
Might have to loosen up that clamp before I do anything, yeah? Okay. Yep, there we go. All right. And your carburetor should be sitting all the way straight back. Okay, and that's how it's going to look like that when it's done. Make sure that's all the way back. Okay, palm hit it. That is sitting all the way back. I can verify it with a flashlight. It looks great. The rubber mount at the bottom is all the way in. And that's pretty much it for that. Fuel line right onto here. Don't forget your clamp. Definitely don't want to forget your clamp. Okay. And then you would tighten up your clamp through the hole here. Once you have the rubber the rubber hole in there. I will have to pop that out with my little screwdriver. Okay. And then you'll be able to access your, uh, what do you call it, the your screw from back here. Which, of course, this one is too short. I'd have to use a different, a longer Allen head, but it will fit right in there and get into it to tighten it up, which I can do that after. So, um, that's pretty much all I have for modifications that were on the KE100. I want to say a special thank you to Tom um, for the carburetor kit. That was awesome and sweet of you. And the um, I got the new drain plug in there at the bottom that goes up underneath, but you know how to put a drain plug in. And, um, so yeah, these are the modifications, guys, that we're going through to do. And the hole where the, um, the choke rod would come up, that rod is not going to be there no more. That's going to be a third cable. So, we're going to have to make that all, all nice and prettied up, too, as well. So. And you still have your idle adjustment rod, which I'm going to have to put back in there and get that through. See, so your, your choke cable, that's going to be drilled out a little bit more. For the, for the diameter of the cable. So it'll be a nice seal. Notice how everything's going to be a seal. There's going to be a seal around the cable. So I'm not going to do that until I get and make sure it fits first. Then I might have to modify it. If I do, it'll still be nice and sealed. So you get your, your grommet here. Up top. You get your grommet here. You get your rubber down here. Your seal is the gasket that goes around. And you get your rubber seal there. And then up top here. So all four points. And that's going to be a nice tight air box. It's a highly modified carburetor. It has more CFM than your factory ones. Because um, I made it that way. It's got bigger jetting for more power. It's going to accommodate that new piston. Um, and the exhaust. Because the, don't forget that exhaust. The expansion chamber is going to make a big difference on this thing. So this thing is going to be quite peppy when we're done. We're running an 85.7 main jet. And I forgot what I said on, I think it's 22 on the uh, pilot jet. They're big enough to see through with the light. And um, like I said, make sure you get those those carburetors clean. So this is Cobb Talk on the KE-102. Um, I'm going to try throwing that in my uh, thing there, my playlist. And getting this out to you guys. And uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Um, I enjoy the comments. And uh, if you guys have any questions about how I did this. By all means, send them my way. This is the Kawasaki KE-102 build. And you can do these modifications without being a 102. Um, you can do these to a 100 and get a lot more performance out of your uh, machine. You just got to, you know, make sure you set them up that way. So, this thing is coming along quite well. I mean, it's going to be, after it's all done, it's going to be degreased, painted, and adjusted, and everything else. So we still have the electronic ignition to put on it. We still have a new sprocket to put on it. Those are the next steps. So everything else here 
You see how I got the oiler on with the tube coming down. I got to put that clamp on. Put the side cover back on. I got to get a gasket for the side cover and the other side cover. And um, I threw all the bolts back in. All the, you know, side cover screws. I threw ones in the other cover. So, basically that's what we're doing. We're just putting this thing together and getting it ready to go on that nice frame. So, after that, this thing's going to be all cleaned up. Pressure washed. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. Once it's all together, sealed up and cleaned up, then I'm going to go ahead and paint it. Paint it up. And then after it's painted up, detail it, like make the fins green. Because we want to get all this dirt that's in these cracks and crevices. We want to make sure that's all gone. We don't want any dirt. Uh, once we run the small, this thing's going to be like a show motor. It's going to be beautiful. Um, we have to adjust the clutch. We're going to do that. I got a brand new clutch cable. I don't know if you saw that or not. I got a brand new clutch cables. Um, one for the kickstand, one for the clutch. Um, brand new throttle cables. They're dirty from sitting. They were sitting in a tote. So they got dirt on them from the stuff they had on top, but they are new. Um, yeah, we got a lot of cool new stuff going on to this motor. This motor is going to be fabulous. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Have any questions, comments, thanks. And we're 86 um, subscribers uh, strong, so that's great, guys. Thank you for subscribing. Um, appreciate this. And I hope that you find these videos informational and um, instruction. I use all proper tools, and um, I give you guys specifications right out of the books. So thank you guys for watching.